Quran is the only well-preserved word of God, unchanged word by word from the Prophet's mouth to your ears. Not even one letter was changed. While until now, we don't even know who the authors of the Gospels are. If you don't know, Gospel of John was not written by John, Gospel of Matthew was not written by Matthew, and so on. It's not called Gospel of Matthew because he is the author, no. It is the Gospel according to Matthew, but the author himself is unknown. And you still refuse to read the Quran one time, and you base your whole life and your whole faith on lies that you get from the media. Since when do you believe anything you hear in the media without any doubt? Read yourself. When you read it yourself, you will find the truth. And if you decide to give it a try, we can assign an Arabic speaker to read it with you for free, translate every verse, and help you grasp the full meaning of every chapter, while answering all of your questions from authentic sources, not from random websites or YouTube videos. Contact us using Facebook or Discord, and we can schedule a regular online meeting with you. If after you read it you don't like it, then no harm no foul. Just go back to believing whatever you used to believe. At least you will have read God's message to you and understood why are you created and what is your purpose in life. It's very, very interesting. I mean, if you look into the hate against Islam, it comes oftentimes from so-called Christian apologetics, right? From certain evangelicals that want to speak bad about Islam and want to promote, obviously, Christianity. And that is totally understandable, there's nothing wrong per se with that. Even though if you look deeper into it, there might be, but you understand my case. So it's team versus team, and the Christians want to debunk Islam, blah blah blah, and don't read it. And you have many many claims, right? Book of the Devil, channeled book, and whatnot. But in many instances, those people haven't even read the Quran. So it's quite interesting. And then when you start reading it, I can only speak about myself, of course, it just reaffirms what you believe anyways. It just reaffirms, yeah, I believe in one God, duh. That's what it is. That's what is called the fitra within Islam, right? You just know, of course, yes, this sounds right. But then when it starts dismantling all of those concepts, saints, right? Church fathers, and it just goes away. Mother of God, that goes away. Jesus, son of God, that kind of breaks down. Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit in one God, surrounding the essence of God, and then that breaks away. And then you just have God, right? This pureness of monotheism, it clears up the mind as well. Because before that, man, you don't really know how to pray. And you think you have to pray to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now to Jesus again. Jesus, 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 forgive me. And then you see in the Orthodox Church, for example, you have those icons and they symbolize certain saints again. And then you ask those saints to speak to God for you. Why? Why all of it, right? And so the Quran is just this ah, fresh breeze, this clarification where you just realize, okay, I didn't have to do any of that, ultimately. <clears throat> At first it can feel like a guilt trip almost because you think to yourself oh i'm losing my religion right so this is what i used to do this is wrong to not do but at the same time once that mental construct is removed you think to yourself why would i even do that in the first place it seems like you're making things complicated for the sake of being complicated in germany we say why easy if you can make it complicated right it's counterintuitive out of the sun and the further you look into it, I don't know where you're at right now, but the further I looked into it, then you realize, hmm, it's very, very interesting, because Christianity itself is a concept, is a religion. It's true, it is a religion, it is a dogma-based religion. Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, it is essentially something that cannot potentially be the religion of Jesus. It's absolutely impossible. And we know that, even historically. Jesus wasn't calling himself a Christian. That would be counterintuitive, doesn't make sense. So the followers of Christ, so to speak, became the Christians. Judaism, with their prophets, Abraham, Moses, they weren't Jews in that classical sense, right, either. Then you look into Rabbinic Judaism, Talmudic Judaism, etc., etc., and you see how that has been twisted and turned and where it ended up now. So ultimately, 
the question really becomes then what that religion is, the religion of the prophets. And Islam makes that very, very strong claim that it simply is submitting yourself to God. And there's literally nothing else. And that for me, yet again, makes perfect sense. And that for me is the message of the Quran.